So I'm streaming, right? I'm gonna ask, hey, Eric? Hang on. Can you just make sure it's working? What? Can you just make sure it's working? Oh, sure. Like, did you get like a notification? Uh, okay. So <laughs> Eric is gonna be my tech support. Um, as usual, right? And uh, he's going to let me know if this is actually working, if it's streaming. Um, thanks for coming. I'm going to, like, it's just now 8 o'clock, so it, for me, it's 8 in the evening. Um, and I think it's 2 o'clock, you know, where you are if you're in Chicago. Um, 3, you know, <laughs> all the time zones. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I'm trying different times for this, um, for this live stream. Um, yeah, I'm like getting my feet wet, trying to figure it out. And hello. Yes? Is it good? Eric? Yeah, I didn't get a notification, but you're streaming. Excellent. Um, so if you, uh, if you subscribe or you become a follower or whatnot to my channel, I guess, then you get you should get a notification every time I go live and um, yeah so I'm trying out different things I thought it at the beginning of doing this this is like my sixth or seventh time doing this that I would uh, do like Thursdays and and Tuesdays and Thursdays at this particular time you know but but that's not good you know I have to find like when people are available when they might want to watch it. What's hard about being in London is that you know it might be a, the kind of thing someone would want to watch while they're sewing. This is very good content, I think, to watch while you're sewing, right? To have sort of on in the background. Um, and maybe, I don't know, maybe you sew when, you know, the kids are asleep. Maybe you sew when you can't, you, can, you can't sleep. Maybe you want to watch this at two in the morning. Well, I can't do that. <laughs> Actually, wait a minute. I probably could. Um, we'll look at the time Thing. I mean, if it's two in the morning for you, well, let's see, if it's two in the morning for you, we're six hours, yeah, I mean, I could do it at 8 a.m. here in London, and you could watch it at, at 2 a.m. I don't know. It's weird. Uh, the point is, I'm messing with the time that I go live so that I can figure out, you know, what time is best. So, yeah, and I couldn't stream on Tuesday for a very good reason. Eric's birthday was yesterday. And I had much preparation to do. And we moved. So the rhythm that I'm getting into for this thing is um, we chat a little bit. And by the way, by the way, you can chat. Okay, let me let me get the chat. I think I've got exit full screen. Yeah, we got it, we got it, we got it. See, you got the chat. Okay, hello, hello, hello. I see Amy, I see Rhonda, I see Carol. We see you, I see you. I had the... Um, the preview thing on full screen because I have so much cool stuff to show you so you couldn't see the chat. Oh, and hello, SW Firefly. Hello, hello. So what I'm hoping will happen is, um, you know, as I do this more and more, more people will come, hang out, see what see what there is to see here. Um, yay, Mantra Tantra, hello. OG, Mantra Tantra, it's really good to see you. Um, so, so yeah, yeah, um, the more people that come in the chat, the more people who hang out, um, the more, hey, Jojo, um, the more you guys can have conversations, you ladies, you gentlemen, whatever, um, friends beyond the binary, right? So you can, you can have, um, you know, you can comment together, hey, city. And, and what I'm going to do, what this is all about is, I mean, Twitch is, is, kind of weird it's 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 a platform that gamers have used for a long time uh video gamers <laughs> you know these guys and they stream their video games and uh hello lakewood um they stream their video games you know and and it's, it's kind of weird to me that someone would want to watch someone play a video game for eight hours but the kids they love it a few adults love it too um but I've seen Twitch kind of become something else. It's a really great live streaming platform. And there's there are a couple people who like research and do stuff live. You know, they, they just sort of do their research and work or whatever. And they turn on the camera. 
and the chat room is going on. Hello, Northeast, North, Northeast Illinois. Um, and it's just sort of mesmerizing, you know, because if you like the person who's streaming and they're kind of doing cool stuff, like right now, if you're brand new to this, I'm sharing my screen with you, just like a Zoom, you know? And what I'm gonna do, you know, like for example, like here's a great picture, right? I'm gonna take you through some amazing pictures that I have recently gotten, recently been able to see through a Quilt Folk article that I've written. So I'm gonna show you, you know, I'm gonna take you through these incredible pictures and, and talk to you about what I've been learning. And, and that's what it is. And sometimes, you know, there's, I mean, I don't know, it's weird. It's like, I wanna sort of <laughs> set expectations. I mean, sometimes it's okay for it to just kind of, for me to type stuff and like pull stuff up and you all talk amongst yourselves. I mean, it's just a different kind of thing. It's not really a show, although, I don't know. I kind of like putting on a show. It's just natural. It's natural. Um, but uh, but anyway, so that's kind of what it is. And today is really cool. Hang on, I'm gonna open the window. Hang on. See, I can do stuff like that. Cool. Okay. Can you see me? Am I in? I don't know. I don't think so. Oh yes, oh yes, that's lovely, ah yes. Okay, okay, the sounds of London. Oh, so, so I was gonna tell you, yeah, so we start, we start this with a chat. We just kind of hang out and chat. And I moved, we moved. Pray, honestly, praise the Lord. Um, if you've been here, been hanging out with me on YouTube at all, the apartment we were in, it was really bad. It was really rough. It's a lot of drug activity. There was a lot of uh, just really sketchy stuff happening over there. And we are very privileged and very grateful that we could make a change. So we made a change and we moved on Saturday. So that is why it's a nightmare in here, but I'm happy as a clam. I'm so happy. So, so we're here in the new space and I set my stuff up today and I'm really excited to be here. And I'm glad that you're here. And what I've done is I have not put up on my screen anyway, how many people are here? Because I don't wanna know. <laughs> because the people who are here that I can see, there's like seven or eight, that's great. And that, that, that I don't wanna know. I don't wanna know if people leave. I don't, I don't, I do wanna know if people come by. Um, you know, the goal is to one day have, you know, I'm not kidding, I'll say what I want, you know, 500 people in here. I mean, really, there's like 18 million quilters in America. Even if that's wrong by half, there are, oh God, what's 18, 18 divided by, uh, nine, right? Nine. <laughs> no, no, nine plus nine is, uh, yes. So, I mean, that's millions of people. So. I don't know if millions of people will really like Twitch, but if you've ever seen my lectures, or you've, I don't know, if you read my blog, you know, this is kind of like a combination of those things. I don't know. So what we're gonna do, what I wanna show you today, and this is something I've never done. Um, I'm gonna go through pictures. We're not gonna search online today. A lot of times what we do, what I'll do, is we, we go down the quilt rabbit hole on the internet and there's so much there. And what I love to do is not just look at quilts, but find out where quilts are in culture beyond the quilt world. And there's so much that I find all the time. And what I wanna do with this is share with you while I find it. Cause I don't like to wait. I don't wanna wait till I have to, <laughs> I don't wanna wait till I get to give a lecture. I don't wanna wait to talk to you about something, you know, in passing or, I wanna share with you now. So what I find is, you know, it's pretty cool stuff. And so I share with you that stuff. But I don't just want to go on the quilt internet uh, with you all the time. So, so, so this time I'm going to share with you these photographs from the Boise Peace Quilt Project. And um, this is content that I got from the Peace Quilt Project from the folks there. It is for a Quilt Folk article um, upcoming. I wrote an article about this project for Quilt Folk. And um, 
I'm going to tell you about it. And I've got clearance, you know, to, to do that uh, via Quilt Folk. And um, hello, the naked you. I like your screen name. Hey, hey, hello, Carice, Carice, Carrie, Carrie Sensei. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I've got it or not, but Carrie Sensei. Okay, yes, it's lovely. I'm so glad you're here. Um, so yeah, I'm, so I'm going to take you through these photographs and tell you about this project. I mean, I did a lot of research, so let's get into it. So, so uh, I did a lot of research for this article, um, and the article is, um, well, it's the Boise Peace Quilt. Hey, oh yeah, hey, um, project, the Boise Peace Quilt Project. And um, yeah, I had two interview, two Zoom calls with a bunch of people <laughs> in each call. I've never done a Zoom interview before with like a group. It, it was amazing, like especially the first round. <laughs> I had six women in there in the room with me. And I mean, by the end of the conversation, we were just like, where are the margaritas? You know, like we could really hang out and, and uh, you know, hang out and, and be together, right? You know, aside from this article, we could just sort of hang out, kind of a soulmate kind of thing. So that happens a lot though with Quilt Folk. Pretty much always, I mean, I would say 90% of the time when I'm writing or researching for a Quilt Folk article, um, you just, I mean, everyone is amazing. Human beings are fascinating and everyone is amazing. And it's happened again and again with writers, Meg Cox, um, Laura McDowell Hopper, Jenny Grover, all these people who have written for Quilt Folk, Carmen Shell. You start to interview someone for a story in Quilt Folk and you fall in love with that person because they're great. Hello, Canada, Judgy. Judgy1935, I love people's screen names. What can they possibly mean? We don't know. So um, so I'm talking to these women and, and uh, about the Boise Peace Quilt Project and it's amazing. And so I'm gonna tell you about it. And uh, the, is it 20th? The 20th issue of Quilt Folk, 20, 20, will be Idaho, right? Beautiful Idaho, um, stunning. That place, that place, it's, it's so beautiful. Um, and Quilt Folk is wonderful too, because you see parts of the country and you learn about parts of the country uh, with every issue. Um, I stepped down as editor in chief, if you don't know that, um, I'm an editorial advisor. And I did that, I asked uh, to do that because um, being in London and needing to work on some different things um, in my own life anyway. But I'm very, I'm very closely, so I was just, just talking, just chatting with um, Quilt Folk today. I mean, I'll never, I'll never leave it. I'll, I'll be there as long as they'll have me because it's very close to my heart. Okay. Um, well, Car Carrie Sensei says every wants, everybody wants to hang out with me. I don't know. I mean, I, no, you know, no. And, and maybe after, after a couple hours, you know, maybe they're like, man, I'm good. Um, but, uh, but thank you. That's very nice. And, and hopefully you want to hang out with me here because it'll be fun. So I have a lot of notes from my research for the Boise Peace Quilt Project, but what I'm going to do is kind of tell you the story, um, you know, an overview, show you some pictures, give you some, because it's so, it's magnificent, right? This story. And then when you, I know you're going to subscribe to Quilt Folk if you haven't already. And um, you can read the full piece there. You know, it's got quotes from the women and, you know, fabulous pictures and things like that. So here's what it is. Okay. So I'm going to do, yeah, I don't want to do full screen because then you can't see the chat. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So I'm going to, but I'm going to make it bigger and I'm going to, I'm going to hide the toolbar. Hmm. I'm going to try to hide things, hide, hide preview. No. Hmm. 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 I don't know. I mean, I think that has to be, I don't want to mess anything up. Can I, Ooh, there you go. How about that? So, I mean, that's pretty good. I want you to see as much of this as possible. So the Boise Peace Quilt Project, right? Um, this is the mission statement, you know? Um, 
the project, I'm going to try to give it to you from memory. I don't want to, to read too much. I believe, yeah, like 1981. So it's, so it's Boise. Let me set the scene for you. Boise, Idaho, 1981. And if you, and I was a baby, I was born in 79. I just had my birthday, August 6th. I'm 42 years old. I kind of like, I like it. I like being 42. It's okay. Uh, it's really good, actually. Um, so I was a baby, but as I as I got a little bit older, as a small child, I remember my mother and my father before they got divorced going to Beyond War meetings. Does anybody remember? I mean, I don't know if you were in Beyond War or any kind of nucle nuclear disarmament group, because in 1981, you know, the Cold War was like. It was really bad. This was like Gorbachev, yeah, and you know Reagan soon, and like you know it was it was really bad. It was like the Russia, the Soviet Union, and you know the United States, not great. The I think um, the Russian Olympics were boycotted or some there were there were like boycotts and there were threats and everything. It was really bad, and and everyone was really scared uh, in America. I mean, not everybody, but people, a lot of people were really worried about what was going to happen next. And there were some women in Boise, Idaho, who were worried. They were worried about nuclear, you know, war. Because um, it was talked about. Headlines got worse and worse. So two women, Anne Hauserath and Diane Jones, um, were in Boise. Yeah, okay, yeah. SW Firefly says in 1971, we moved into a house with a bomb shelter. We did not build it. Yeah, incredible. And I mean, you know, in the 1950s, right, my mom was born in 49. And she, you know, I mean, in the 50s, it was, you know, yeah, I've seen the films, right, where the kids are under their desk. I mean, it's just awful, right? It's awful. And and it kept going, right? I mean, the Cold War is like oh, horrible, right? Endless. And, and so these two women, it was Boise, Idaho, and one of them, Anne, was new to town. So she hadn't really met anybody yet, but she, she, she went to a, a lecture um, that was put on by, you know, there were lots of these like grassroot, grassroots groups who were like doing, you know, meetings and, and, you know, fundraisers and things like that for the cause of nuclear disarmament. And Diane Jones and Ann Hausereth, they saw this woman speak about how um, toxic waste from a nuclear power plant had... Um, resulted in cancer in her family, right? So these two women are like, they're young mothers and, you know, and so they're like, we, somebody's got to do something. What are we going to do, you know? And so they thought about what to do and they decided to make a quilt. And that was sort of, you know, it was like, okay, let's make a quilt. And, and what, right? Well, and find a way to get to, to uh, find a way to get it to the Soviet Union find a way to get it to another couple women or group of women as kind of an act of faith as a symbol um, of of their we'll come back to that um, of, of hope right because women in the Soviet Union of course were worried about their children too and and that's you know Anne and Diane were like what's going to happen to our babies, right? Like, we don't want nuclear war for us, but the children are the most important part of this. So so they decided to make a quilt. And hi, oh, Belle. Belle, you're here. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad everyone's here. Thank you for coming. So, so they decided to make a quilt. And they didn't know how. <laughs> neither one of them, neither one of them knew how to make a quilt. The best ideas start when you just have no idea what you're getting into, right? Um, the second quilt I ever made, there are 1,200 pieces in it. It's just all half square triangles because I didn't really know I, I couldn't, I shouldn't do that, you know? I just did it. So they, they decided, you know, let's make a quilt, but we don't have to do it all ourselves. Let's find some people who know what they're doing and recruit them also to get, you know, to help make this thing. So they assembled this group of women. And one of the women, I mean, there's parts of the story that will choke me up because it's amazing. There was another woman, Heidi. Uh, you'll read about her in the article. She is 
a very special person, and she was really a driving force be, be, behind this uh, too. 1200, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, no, wait, is that right? No, there's tw there's there's 1200 half square triangles. I think it's, is it 2400 pieces? I, I think so, actually, that, that quilt. I have it here with me, but I can't get it out just yet. Next time. So, so, so anyway, lo long story, slightly shorter. Um, they made this quilt and, and with women, you know, in, in Boise and what happened, and this is the first quilt that they made. Okay. So the Boise Peace Quilt Project exists to this day. So that was 1981. We are in 2021. So we are talking about 40 years of this project happening. This is the first quilt that they made. And I have all of the, now, now I, I have not, I haven't pulled up, um, pictures of all the quilts that they've made because it's been 40 years, you know, and they don't give a quilt every year, but they, um, they've given many. Okay. So there were 35 people, 35 women, a couple guys actually, who, who started, who, who worked on this very first quilt. And this quilt, um, by the way, by the way, there's a film, there's a film. I'm going to put it in the chat. Um, I don't have a link to this. So there's a film about the Boise Peace Quilt Project. I actually, I haven't seen it. I did all of this research and interviewed uh, many of the women. Um, I wanted to watch the film, but I didn't, I couldn't access it. You can, you can in the States. It, it's not impossible to find. The Boise Peace Quilt Project, it's called A Stitch for Time. Um, it's 1987. I'm putting this all in the chat. Um, directed by um, Nigel Noble. And now just wait till I tell you. Um, it was up for an Academy Award. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was up for an Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature. Look, for, if someone, if one of you is Googles it and finds where you can watch it, and I can find out too, because one of the women told me how to watch it. Um, if you find it, put it in the chat, you know, give it, give a link. So anyway, so this is the very first quilt. Um, images of peace, quilt squares, you know, peace and, uh, and images of Idaho showing, you know, showing their, showing their world, right? Um, sunshine over the mountains, you know, horses, the st shape of the state, you know, look, America and the Soviet Union. Let me know someone in the chat if you can see my cursor. There was one chat where we could, you couldn't see it and I, I really like, I'd like you to be able to see it. Um, yeah, so, so they made this quilt. Okay, so. <laughs> So, you know, the pictures that I have are just magic, right? Because these are pictures they took um, of, of the event, of the, the, um, the process. Um, this is, let's see, is it Katie? Katie and, I, call, I called my folder full of pictures, Boise Babes, right? The Boise Babes. Um, but these are two of, of the women's children who were yeah, I mean, they're grown up now. They, they definitely have kids of their own. If they have kids, they have kids of their own. So this is the time, you know, this is the time frame. Okay, this quilt, so, so I, what I've done is I've taken, you know, from the folder that I have, I've pulled some quilts to show you, a number of them, because over the years they've made so many. Um, this one, oh yeah, oh yeah. Let me, uh, let me make sure that I... Let's see, let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So, okay, so after that first quilt, and I'll tell you, so what happened with the first quilt is that it went to Lithuania. They found people to send, you know, at the State Department or, you know, through the channels of the government, you know, in Boise, and then they found a place to send it to Lithuania. And it, it went to women who lived there in the Soviet Union. And, you know, it they did it, they did it. These women from Boise, and there's much more to the story, but they actually were able to connect with with women there and it was amazing and and here i'll show you this article you know this is in the new york times this is later this was a, a later quilt okay it'll all make sense but you know the new york times did this article about them 
1985, and it's it's super condescending, of course, and they did get a lot of press for this particular quilt, which we'll see in a minute. But like, you know, they were they were all, you know, like, well, do you really think a quilt is gonna like make peace between the USSR and the United States? And they were like, probably not, right? In this in this way that you say that that you're implying, but the people who have made this quilt are changed. Like we have created community, we have become friends, you know, we've helped each other through things and that the sort of those ripples of peace and harmony and connection, they, they do make a difference actually, Mr. Reporter. And, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, that's like the best answer ever is that actually, yeah, you know, it's, it's local and it goes global from there. So so after they gave this first quilt to people they didn't know, strangers, they decided to start making quilts to award specific people that they wanted to congrat to thank for making peace in the world. So peacemakers, they decided to start making quilts for people, pardon me, that they identified as peacemakers in this world. And just wait till you see who they've given quilts to. Okay, this quilt was given in 1983. Oh, I, even, I can't, I can't. To Pete Seeger. Pete Seeger. I can't even deal. Um, the great musician, the great folk singer, Pete Seeger. And one of the things, I have a picture of him, just hold on to your hats. Can I zoom? I think you can see everything I do. Um, didn't get the meaning connection. Uh, yeah, I know. Exactly. Exactly. The, the newspaper editor, I mean the editor, but also the, yeah, no, yeah. The writer, the editor, like, pfft. and my mom, by the way, always said, you know, uh, Yay, yay, hi, Star Sundance. I'm so glad you're here, you know. And by the way, everybody, if you like this, you know, tell t tell your friends. Be like, hey, get on get on this thing, you know, because we're having a good time. And I think, by the way, Twitch, you know, at first I was like, ugh, what is this thing? But it's, it's owned by Amazon. <laughs> like, Amazon bought it years ago, so you just sign in with Amazon, you know? So it's not, like, weird. It's amazon so tell everybody to come over here so so what i was going to say is my mom and liz um mom always said you know when they had an article written about them about how they were like making a show and a magazine and it was a success you know they'd have like a little a little article in the women's section of the newspaper and she was like you know we were we were doing amazing stuff and we just got this much room you know in the women's section um, she didn't have a chip on her shoulder about it, really. She was just like, <laughs> thanks, guys. So, yeah, the editor and the, the writer, you know, of that article about, like, oh, the Boise Peace Quilt Project. Isn't that sweet? Um, whatever. <laughs> Dust it off, right? Anyway. So, so, let's see. What was I going to say? What was I talking about? Okay. So, yes, so they started giving quilts to, to peacemakers. Now this quilt, okay, was given to Pete Seeger. Here are some women working on the quilt for Pete Seeger. Are you ready for this? Have you watched the documentary about Pete? Okay, I'm sure there's many. Oh my God, okay, yeah. That's Pete Seeger. Okay, I'm bringing out, I can't, I just cannot. Eric hasn't even seen this, he's a huge Pete Seeger fan. Hey, Eric. I have a, a picture of Pete Seeger quilting a quilt. What? That's pretty cool. Yes, it is pretty cool. Um, I mean, look at the... Ugh. There's another one, too. All of these pictures, by the way, um, are, the Bo are the Boise... Oh, sorry. No, okay, that's just... That's the one I have of Pete. Um were given, sent to me by uh, Heidi, who, you know, has these in, in archives. Um, look at this. I mean, wait a minute now. I don't know. I don't know about that. What is that? Bring him in. I know. Bring Pete Seeger in. Okay. Now, now I got to tell you, but see, what are these back here? 
you know? Piecing for our lives, could you die? Oh, Pete. <gasps> Iowa, what, what is, I haven't even seen this. Iowa Peace Quilt, what? Now, I'm from Iowa. Now I do know, I do know that other states absolutely, and other groups around the country, totally did peace quilts too. So that's what we're seeing. Well see now this, this is the kind of thing that I like to share. And this is happening in real time. I know it's not like a scripted drama. I know this isn't Downton Abbey. I tried to watch it, I, I only got through season two. But but it's 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 exciting because you're you know, I'm discovering something with you. Iowa Peace Quilt. Who did that? Who where is that quilt now? I wanna know. You know, it's so great. I love quilts made in the 80s. I, you know, I used to think, but now everything old is new again. Oh, that might be really loud. Um, oh, Pete, he's so wonderful. Look at that. Oh, what I was going to say. Okay, hang on. He has the, the motto for the group. He, he said, he said what they, mm -mm, mm -mm. he said what they say now as sort of their motto. Pete Seeger said when he was a warden, I remember they gave this quilt to him as a thank you for a for being a peacemaker, for working toward peace in this world. And Pete Seeger closed his, um, his thank you note with, quote, we'll stitch this world together yet. Don't give up. So. Anyway. Iowa Peace Quilt. So yeah, there was there was a group in Chicago who did um, who did a Peace Quilt. Lots of these things happen, but like, is there a sign here? Peace Quilts. I mean, were they for sale? What is happening here? Ugh. You know, if you know anything, this is why it's fun. Go 80s, working on a puff quilt. Yes, a puff quilt. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. We gotta do this. We gotta look at a puff quilt. Do you know what these are? I mean, have you? do you remember these? Huh, this is so funny. Lo and behold, we featured this this girl in um, the family edition of Quilt Folk Magazine, and this is how we found her. Let's look at this, let's look at this quilt. She's delightful, this girl. In issue 16, family. Um, oh, Pinterest, oh God, I hate Pinterest. Oh, oh, I can't, oh God. Hate it. Okay, let's just look at this lovely quilt. Um, and I'll, I'll put a link um, in the chat so you can visit her delightful website. So she, you know, she she made a puff quilt because her, her nana, you know, her grandma, and she used to sew and she made a puff. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna make a puff. I want a puff. I mean, I'm gonna make a puff. Um, so what am I doing? Okay, I have to write down Iowa Peace Quilt. Iowa Peace Quilt question mark? Where is it? Iowa Peace Quilt? Who has it? Who has? Who made? You know what? I bet my mom. I mean, Iowa's not that big of a state. There were a lot of quilters quilting in the 80s, but like, you know, I don't know. Who made? And then, Puff Quilt. I'm almost done with a baby quilt for my friend Sophie. I showed it last stream. I'll show it again. I, I have one more side of the binding to turn. Anyway, look. What is this? P look, puff quilt. Amazing. Why do I hate Pinterest? I Oh, you made a puff baby quilt. Yes, and quilt folk. Yes, Belle, you remember. <laughs> here's the thing. Star Sundance, here's the thing. I, I hate Pinterest because, and this sounds a little bit like, ooh, as an editor, <laughs> as an editor, like there's often no credit to a photo. And not only is that like meh for the person who took the photo, it's just not helpful. Like I go to Pinterest, I'm like, oh, this is great. And I find, you know, like a picture of like an Iowa peace quilt or something like that. And then I, it doesn't help me because there's never any like, well, there's often no, no link to something else. And, I know it's amazing. Like I've used Pinterest before when I was gathering images for a thing. And so I totally get it and I get why people like it. But for me, it's just always like <laughs> frustrating. 
So let me just go here to this lovely, lovely girl. Oh, see, this is why. Ugh. Okay, we're just gonna go low and behold, stitchery.com. What is her name? What is her name? She's so great. You should you should go there and check her out. She's just great. That totally makes sense. Got it. Yeah, you, know, you know, God bless you. I mean, Pinterest. You know, but it's just hard. Yes, Brittany. Brittany. So sweet. So great. So she has patterns, you know, check it out. Okay, back to, back to this. Okay. What's happening? Where, okay, oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Right. Um, Cap Weaver 78, your first quilt was a puff baby quilt. I love that. So anyway, so that's what I'm talking about. Okay, Pete Seeger, okay. So let's go to, so this one, we're back to the Boise Peace Quilt Project. So this one was a big deal. Are you ready for this? So this was the Soviet Americans, Soviet American children's quilt. Is that right? No, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. The National Peace Quilt, okay? Look at this message here. So I'll read you what I got from Gwen, the amazing archivist, um, and Heidi too, but November 1984, 67 U.S. Senators began to spend a night with the National Peace Quilt embroidered with these words, rest beneath the warmth and weight of our hopes for the future of our children, dream a vision of the world at peace, act to give the vision life. This quilt is composed of children's drawings rendered to fabric, one from each of the 50 states. So the deal here was that they made this quilt and they sent it to Washington. Uh, they might've gone to Washington. And the idea was that every Senator would sleep under it for one night to, you know, I know, right? To remind them of what they were supposed to be doing basically, which is keeping us safe and working for the future and keeping the children, you know, like in a safe place, right? And I, I guess, so, and, and every senator who did sleep under it, I think, got their name embroidered on it. Um, oof, let me see if I've got some of the names. Joe Biden, Joe Biden did it. I'm trying to think who, if they told me, da, 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 da. Oh, I don't, rem I don't remember who did, but you know, I think Oral Robert, no, <laughs> anyway, a bunch of them did. Not all of them did, you know, but a bunch of them did. Okay, this is there. Here's the National Peace Quilt. It was in a parade, you know, in Boise. I love these pictures. I can't stand it. I mean, are quilts in parades? Are, are you putting quilts on floats in your homecoming parades, in your 4th of July parades? If you're not, Get on it, because that's amazing. Ugh. The 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 horse's blanket needs to be quilted, though. I don't think it is. I don't know. Look at this. Look at these kids. They're all grown up now. I mean, I was their age, right? In 80... This was in 84. Yeah, I mean, I was... I was five. Yeah. I can never tell kids aids, ages. Look at those bonnets. Oh, my God. I'll have my mom send a picture of the first book that that she and Liz did, the basket book, I think, or the vest, quilted vest book. All of Liz, Liz's kids and all of us are in the book wearing, you know, bonnets. It was a thing. Um, so look at them, look at these people dressed as clowns, you know? That's the quilt, it's so cool. Quilts and parades, great idea. That's what I'm saying, Cap Weaver. That's what I'm saying. I mean, they're so colorful, right? It's a great idea. So, okay, so they didn't just give quilts to people. They gave, they made quilts for, you know, causes. So Augustin Pinochet, horrifying Nicaragua dictator, they made a quilt, you know, for the, for the people of Nicaragua. And I don't know, let's see, it was an expression of friendship and this is in 86. So we're, the years are passing and they're still making quilts. That's the thing. It's like, it was this idea that they had and then, you know, they kept doing it. And part of the reason they kept doing it is because they became, they were friends, man. They were tight. 
just like a guild, but they had this common cause and they would make a quilt and they would decide by committee, you know, and I, and I understood it was not always easy, right, for them to figure out who gets the quilt this time. But they, but they reached a consensus and they, you know, they kept making quilts for peace. Um, this was an expression of friendship and solidarity with women and children in Nicaragua, delivered late summer 86 with school supplies, school supplies to a Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan elementary school. It has this quote, quote, we certainly cannot deny to other nations that principle whereon our own government is founded, that every nation has a right to govern itself internally under what forms it pleases and to change those forms at its own will. Thomas Jefferson. Wow. Amazing. Okay. This one got a huge amount of press. Do you remember this? Do you remember this article from the New York Times? This was the quilt they were talking about. This quilt was the joint Soviet-American peace quilt, cooperatively designed and stitched by American and Soviet women. Cooperatively designed and stitched two parts of the world, Soviet women and the women from the BPQP made this together. They made it together. Um, batted with peace fleece, quote unquote, peace fleece from Soviet and American sheep. I'm just, I just need to put that in the chat. I just need you to see it. They used peace fleece from Soviet and American sheep. Just leave that right there. Vermont is where they got the, the wool from there. It has 40 images of real American and Soviet children. It was completed in 86. Boise Peace Quilters and Women for Peace carried this quilt to Geneva, Switzerland to show to U.S. Ambassador Max Campbellman and USSR Ambassador Viktor Karpov. While in Geneva, they also displayed the the quilt at the World Council of Churches and at a United Nations women con Women's Conference. Look at that. I have to get my notes, sorry. I like a little flare. But I mean, are you serious? Like, this is amazing. Look at this. Ugh. I'm dead. I'm deceased. That's a very, very powerful photograph. Um, yeah, it's sort of like cinematic. Amazing. I hate digital photography. Everything looks terrible. Actual film looks so much better, don't you think? Okay, we got a few more. Just want to give you a few more here. This one is the anniversary quilt. Is that right? Yep, anniversary quilt, 1988. Um, shared with others in the community. Providing comfort and support in illness, sadness, gladness, and death. Depicts the quilts made during the first five years of the project and the quilters who made them. Something I didn't mention is that, look at, they're all quilting. <laughs> they're all quilting in the middle. It's a quilt about quilting. In a quilt. Um, they award these quilts, right? I, I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but they gave the quilt to Pete Seeger in person. And Heidi told me that's really important. They were always wanted to give the quilt to the person in person. We have two very famous people coming up very shortly who were give, they were given the quilt in person, awarded the quilt, because Heidi said they really want it in Boise. So they'd invite them to Boise and give them the quilt. And Heidi said they wanted to do it because they wanted the community to see, you know, what a peacemaker looked like and, and what they had to say, you know? And, and that's amazing. You know, it wasn't just like we send the quilt to them a little gnat. We send the quilt to them or, you know, we hope they get it. No, no, no. Come to Boise and we'll give you this thing. And the whole community, the whole city, everyone can come for free. This one. Oh yeah. I said there were two famous people. There's three. This was a quilt for Cesar Chavez, the great farm workers union organizer, Cesar Chavez. And guess what? They got Chavez 
to come to Boise. Or, I'm not sure actually if he came to Boise, but they they, they gave the quilt to him in person. That's Cesar Chavez. <laughs> and there he is. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Second from the left. <laughs> That's Regina in the green dress, and she was one of the people on the call. Um, she was so excited. She has a picture on her sewing studio wall of her and Chavez. Um, look at this. <laughs> She's really happy. But I mean, Cesar Chavez. Women from Idaho made a quilt and gave it to Cesar Chavez. I mean, I, I, this is them working on it. It's a great quilt, too. I love it. The circles, I love it. Any pictorial quilt, I'm, I love it. Okay, Just Us. This is the Stitching Against Poverty Bias, sewing together Idaho's powerful, um, the, it's 1990, um, they, were, they gave it to the Boise Action Council. So this is a quilt um, with a message for, you know, the, the, pover the poverty stricken in their, in their community. It's a great photo. I had to put it in here because it's so good. Um, and yeah, there's a couple guys in there. There's a few. This one, Centennial Quilt, a few more. This was a uh, hand-dyed fabric. I have a picture, a process picture here. Um, this had contributions from members of 140 ethnic groups and American Indian tribes of Idaho um, with the words Idaho's people celebrating diversity. Uh, the, the project presented it to the Idaho Human Rights Commission in 1990, and it's at the Idaho Historical Museum. 1990, you know, they're like, hello, let's celebrate all of Idaho all the time. This is them doing the hand dye, you know? Ugh, it's great. A, a triptych. Look at that little shorty in the front. She's like, ah, take my picture. Okay. Look at the center, the person in the center. Do you see, do you recognize who that is? Anyone? Can you tell? who that is. I'm not going to say. You'll see in the next picture who it is, but can anyone tell who that is? Surrounded by children. Oh, he's not in this picture. He'll be in the next picture. It's not Joe. It's Mr. Rogers. It's Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Star Sundance, you got it. Yeah, it's Mr. Rush. You tell your friends to come to this chat. I mean, have you, I mean, you to come to this, this show. Because, you know, people who aren't, hey, Jojo, people who aren't here aren't seeing this picture. I mean, look at this. And when you think about Look at that quilt. For our, from our neighborhood to your neighborhood. I oh, I can't. that's so beautiful. And they really, look at the picture. I mean, when you think about, I'm gonna cry in a minute. Oh, completely. When you think about like peacemakers, I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, yeah. Mr. Rogers and a quilt, so. That, that happened. Um, Rosa Parks. And Rosa Parks, so this quilt is gorgeous. I think this is amazing. I mean, design-wise, right? I mean, they're all amazing, honestly. Why did quilts get, like, plastic? I'm sorry, but they, well, I know why they got kind of plastic, because the quilt industry exploded, and people wanted to sell stuff. I mean, big companies wanted to sell stuff. And mom has copped to this, by the way. Mom has said, you know, she and Liz, you know, it was all about the kits and the notions and the stuff. And, you know, quilts got pretty, there was kind of a homogeneity about quilts, you know, for a while. And everybody was making the same thing, you know, but quilts used to be kind of weird, you know, and I like the weird stuff. SW Firefly, aren't they great? Aren't these quilts amazing? I agree with you. Um, you know, quilts, quilts, I, I want quilts with soul, man. I, I want them to be, look at, okay, this is it. I talk about this all the time. 
What is this animal? Does it matter? No, it does not. No, it does not. Is it a moose? Is it a dog? Is it a cow? We're not sure. And you know what? I'm glad. I like it better. I love that I can't tell. Sojourner Truth, I'm sure. Yep, Sojourner Truth. Sandra Denegal. We shall overcome in the name of Jesus. Amazing. Um, so this, once again, if you are new, if you're new to the chat, uh, new to the show, this is a quilt. I'm zooming in. Is it an aardvark? Yeah, it might be an aardvark. The new Elizabeth. Maybe so. Maybe. You know what? I feel dumb right now because it may be some symbolism that I, I, I actually don't know. So I apologize if I was being flip about something that's in really important. I, I, I didn't mean to be. Um, the Montgomery bus boycott. Incredible. I actually, there's a quilt made for that in particular. I have so much to share with you. <laughs> like there's so much to share with you. You just have to join me for this stuff. Um, Margaret Fuller. Look at these blocks. I mean, prayer changes things. Judith Tripp. Look at this beautiful thing. So this was given to Rosa Parks. Um, and sh they gave it to her in person. <laughs> and Heidi told me, oh my god, Ugh. I'm just gonna let you, I'm just gonna let you read that. Um, look at this freedom movement come alive. Thank you, Sister Rosa. You're the spark that started our free freedom movement. So, um, I don't have a picture of. Rosa Parks at the at the thing. I'm sorry. I thought I did, um, but 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 the point is, Heidi told me that she that it was very very difficult to get in touch with Rosa Parks. Like I think they, you know, it took years, right, to get to get her, to her. Um, look at that. Anyway. <sighs> okay. But I do have a picture of them waiting at the airport. Yeah, yeah. So obviously she came. She came. Um, I mean, ugh, quilters, man. Quilters. Pretty awesome. Okay, just, yeah, okay, a few more here. That, those were the Mr. Rogers and Rosa Parks and Cesar Chavez, big. Big ones, big ones. Headliners, marquee names. Um, but this is, they made, they made a quilt for Masterpiece Theater. And it's a puppet show. <laughs> the quilt is a puppet theater for young children. Quilt squares represent themes of conflict resolution with attached puppets to give the children a forum for acting out new skills for getting along and cooperating. Completed November 1995, it was used in Boise. Oh, Masterpiece. <laughs> Sorry, Master... Masterpiece. Um, completed in 95. It was used in Boise public preschools until presented in uh, 2011 to Mary Ellen Rooney, who founded Mind Wing Concepts with materials, including this quilt, to assist children with oral and written expression, critical thinking, comprehension, and social and emotional growth. She may be a local Boise person. I'm not sure, but it's an actual puppet theater. Okay. Um, I think, is that it? No, no. Well, yeah, Eve Ensler, the vagina monologues. I mean, cool. <laughs> Whoa. Um, this quilt was given to Eve Ensler, and there's Eve Ensler here over on the left. I mean, we're talking about Boise, Idaho, you know? Eve Ensler really toured a lot with the vagina monologues, so I'm sure she came to town. This last one, I remember now, this is the last one. Gwen, Gwen uh, McElhenney is a lovely person. She's one of the people who gave, you know, who got the photos organized. And she, this is a detail of a quilt, and I'm not sure which quilt it is. But she was talking to me, you know, some trash about not knowing how to quilt. And she's like, well, I do other things, you know, I help with the potlucks and, you know, rides, people give people rides to meetings and things. I'm like, I see this, I'm like, what? 
or maybe it's oh maybe it's Jenny Johnson <laughs> actually <laughs> I think okay I think Gwen's <laughs> I think Gwen's is this one Gwen's is the block up top that's her signature I think Jenny Jenny Johnston she did that one uh, either way Gwen was uh, lovely is lovely so that's what I had to show you on the Boise Peace quilt project now you know do they make quilts these days they they do they've slowed down a bit one of the things that's so hard about you know groups like this let's go to this is that you know let's be honest these ladies are getting older you saw them in the 80s they were young mothers they had the kids well you know my mom's 70 now and you know there are obviously like a lot of charity groups there's a lot of charity work that goes on in the quilt community um you know with modern the modern quilters and stuff but they're you know they're they're sort of accepting these days that like without fresh fresh blood without new energy fresh energy you know the boise peace quilt project will end and maybe that's okay you know maybe that's that's all right but you know 40 years of extraordinary I mean, extraordinary stuff. It's kind of a shame. And I, and I think about that a lot with like quilt shows like the Vermont Quilt Festival. You know, it's been going forever. It's the oldest quilt festival in the country. And if if younger people, and by younger, I mean like, you know, 40-ish, 50-ish. If we don't take up these shows and these projects, they'll go away. And new new things, you know, other things will come up. It's just the way it goes but there's this legacy you know that's pretty awesome okay so hello we're back to Brittany here's what we're gonna do now I haven't done this yet um, on a stream ever I haven't done it on on anything on YouTube anything uh, I'm gonna we're gonna watch a movie um, it's 44 minutes long so I don't know if you want to hang out and watch it with me I've never seen it when I was reading about the Boise Peace Quilt Project, uh, I came upon a text in a academic paper that talked about the Peace Ribbon. Is that right? The Peace Ribbon? And it was another sewing project. It wasn't a quilt exactly, I don't think. But it was this, this project where a woman started, that she wanted to run a ribbon like around the world or something like that like a ribbon for nuclear disarmament I'm pretty sure but it was a very this this paper that I, I read was talking about the ribbon and the boy and the Boise Peace Quilt Project was brought up as this other kind of thing that happened and I want to know more about this ribbon thing and so and so in the internet archive I'm pretty good at Google Google people so in the internet archive I found the ribbon starts here. I found a copy of this um, in 1982. So we're talking about exactly the same time. We're exactly the same time as the BPQP. Um, Justine Merritt. Look, she has an idea to tie a ribbon for peace around the Pentagon. Okay, <laughs> a little bit more doable than tying something around the world. Um, she creates a one yard whoop, fabric panel and ask her friends to do the same. Ask them to think what would be lost if nuclear war broke out. Okay, look, I'm not gonna read this whole thing because we're gonna find out. Her idea spreads by 85. The fabric ribbon is 10 miles long, made up from panels all over the country. Okay, okay. I mean, it becomes the longest piece of folk art in the world. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I wanna watch this. I wanna watch this. So I'm not gonna read the rest of that thing because we're gonna find out. And I don't want to, if I make it full screen, we can't see the chat. So I am going to just make the screen big-ish, bigger. And, you know, I might, I'll probably stop, you know, and throw some stuff in there. You know, it's a live stream. It's a reaction video, technically, right? Let me just, let me see if I can make the, okay, yeah, here we go. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it with you because I really want to see it. I don't know what y'all are doing right now, you know, but you can, uh... <gasps> okay, oh, sorry, I'm just clearing out these windows. I hope you're sewing, you know, that'd be cool. Um... All right, let's do it, let's do it. I just 
just want to make right, right, right. hang on one second hang on I've never done this before let me just see no 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 I we we have to have the chat I mean that's the whole point right okay all right let's do it let's just watch it You're sewing. Oh, yay. Carice. Or Carrie. I don't know. I love saying your name different ways. Okay, here we go. Um, I don't know. Okay. And I've got some birthday cake, by the way. I got Eric a, a red velvet cake for his birthday. I got a really big one. I, I It's so big that I froze half of it. Because you know, you know what? Have you ever, of course, have you ever had a birthday cake or a really good dessert? And, uh, and you know you you freeze half of it so that um, hey the new Elizabeth oh no problem and you know what by the way you can watch this you can watch this back for 60 days I think these things stay up so you can watch the beginning of it we've had a good time oh this is like my best dream yet I really like it I'm getting you know I'm getting the flow but anyway so I bought this big cake and I cut it in half and we're still eating you know the half that we saved but you know one day in the future, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but we're gonna be like, oh, we have cake in the freezer and it'll be so great. And I looked online and the best way to freeze a cake, you put it, you put the cake in the freezer for an hour, just, just put it in there, you know? And we actually have room for that because we just moved into this apartment and our freezer isn't packed full of stuff. So we put, you put the cake in there for an hour to set the frosting, the icing, and then you take it out and you wrap it, wrap it, wrap it in, um, uh, cell, cell, I mean, in a cling film in saran wrap. And then you do it in foil. And I knew that part, but I didn't know the part about putting it in the freezer for an hour before you do that to set the icing. Um, oh, Star Sundance. Oh, I just love you guys. I'm so glad you're here. I just love it. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm so glad. Yep. That's the best way to freeze a cake. I just... I'm just so glad you're here. Okay, I'm sorry. I keep saying we're gonna watch this movie and then I start talking about cake, but I'm gonna eat that cake while we're doing this. Okay, let's do this. I hope, I hope. This is how it all began. This is when I didn't have any money and I put a uh, Trailways bus ticket on my MasterCard and uh, go to Alamosa or Durango and people would help pay my car fare. So this is the very beginning when I had these short journeys. And then later people would help me go long distances. I went to uh, the Presbyterian of the Redwoods and so there's David Steele driving me up there and Dorothy Merritt driving me back. Here's the ferry boat from Lopez Island to Anacortes. Here's the Coca-Cola. See, this really isn't a ribbon. This is a memory of the ribbon. So it's not finished. And of course, the journey isn't finished either. In 1982, Justine Merritt, a retired school teacher, launched an original creative project with the purpose of expressing a heartfelt longing for nuclear disarmament. The first group she spoke to was a small congregation of St. Ignatius Church in Ignacio, Colorado. Good morning. Some of you may not know why I am here this morning. It is because the idea of the ribbon was With the deepest conviction that there were many like herself longing for peace, so, she began to share her enthusiasm and to inspire others to contribute to what was to become the longest piece of folk art in history. She asked people to look into their... By the way, okay, so this is what... A reaction video is all about or whatnot so if you want to watch this all the way through without commentary or me pausing I put the link in the chat so you can watch this and you can make it you know bigger and this is twitch right this is how we do this but I just want to point out you know when I was talking to the Boise Peace Quilt people you know one thing that Anne I talked to one of the founders I didn't talk to Diane but I talked to Anne you know, they're like, we were one, I've got the interview somewhere, the transcript, but she's like, we were one of many grassroots organizations all over the country who were like, no, 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 no. Nuclear winter, not interested. 
get your together, you know, Gorbachev and Carter and then Reagan. And, you know, don't do this. So anyway, so there, this was, it's another example of what was happening, right? Those people at the church, you know, watching the watching this woman speak. It was happening all over the place. And my mom and dad, yeah, beyond war. I remember being really little and they like went to this meeting and I was like, Ugh, but I got to play with the other kids, you know, so it was really exciting. Okay. Hearts to express on fabric the theme, what I cannot bear to think of as lost forever in a nuclear war. What resulted in a nationwide grassroots effort began with the vision of one woman. Hmm. It occurred to me to tie a ribbon around the Pentagon, and um, I'm 61, so there was an echo of a child tying a string around a finger gently to remember something. So that was the image of the ribbon. It would be a gentle reminder to the nation that we love the earth and all its peoples. <laughs> and from that um, wonderfully foolish notion, in 82, it has grown. The ribbon was to be made up of yard-long panels of fabric, each one expressing the voice of an individual, a family, and sometimes an entire community. And so it began through small gatherings with a few flyers as friends told neighbors and neighbors told relatives. As the message spread across the nation, information also appeared in craft and needlework publications. Mm. The response then grew by quantum leaps. Quilting, embroidery, silk screening, painting, batik, applique. These were only a few of the many techniques used in creating each segment. The ribbon would stand as a tribute to the creative and constructive nature of humankind. Mm. It would symbolically rival the destructive side. I've known Justine for probably about eight years. Uh, she's been in Denver for that long. And she shared it with me um, very early. Uh, then she began to travel. She has children that live in various parts of the United States and lots of friends that live in various cities. and. She shared it with them. She set up times that she could meet with small groups. And little by little, they began to share the idea. <laughs> and at one point, she found that she was gone all the time. And people were calling Denver saying, I want to get a hold of Justine. And at that point, she said to me, would you like to help? Would you be the person here in Denver who could be the contact person? And, oh, oh goodness, sorry. So, Kate, um, great question. If you guys have questions as we go along, I mean, obviously I don't know everything, but I know a fair amount about s certain things. So the questions uh, Kate asks, I wonder how this relates to the AIDS quilt. Similar idea, indeed. Did the AIDS quilt founders know about this ribbon? I haven't heard of it before. <laughs> um, I had not heard about it either when I started looking. I know, right? Star Sundance, so inspiring. Um, I hadn't heard about it either until I, I believe... I heard about it, I read about it in this book, Frey book, yeah, Art and Textile Politics, which is an amazing, amazing book. Um, she has a whole chapter in there about the AIDS quilt, okay? Fascinating. Julia Bryan Wilson, amazing. She talks about, I mean, a whole chapter is, is dedicated to this. Anyway, I, I'm pretty sure that I read about the ribbon for the first time in that. And, and of course the context of it being that there was this other textile project that was nationwide. I mean, you, you got it exactly. There is there are all these similarities. Um, and they said in this film just now, it was the biggest folk art project ever, which of course now they say about the AIDS quilt. Um, I think that the research that I've done on the AIDS quilt, and I gave a lecture about it at QuiltCon a few years ago, and, and I, you know, I have a lot of notes, and I have that lecture, and, and I have to look back. But, you know, the AIDS quilt, I think the first, the first, I, mean, I think it was 81. I think it was, yeah, it was like 81, 82. So if this, yeah, oh, um, okay, mm -hmm -hmm. let's see, hang on. I think it's 81 or 82, right? I hate the Wikipedia article for this. Hi, Eric. 
We're having a really good time. I'm glad. That's Eric. He's hello. going away. Goodbye. Okay, hello, goodbye. Um, sorry, I think... Oh, yeah, Wikipedia. Sorry, it's the first hit. Um, oh, actually, yes, it, it's the largest piece of community folk art. I, I, I don't know. I just... It's a problem. Um, oh, the idea for the name's Project Memorial Quilt conceived on in 1985. So the answer to your question is fourth is an Eric Cole. Thank you, Mantra Tantra. Agreed. Um, the answer to your question, Kate, is the AIDS quilt came way after the ribbon. I mean, we're talking about 82, man. So this was in the papers without without question. This was in the papers and the Boise Peace Quilt Project, they got a lot of press in 85, 86 for that, this, the quilt they made for the senators to sleep under, but they got press before that, you know? And Cleve Jones, who, who started the AIDS quilt, who sparked the whole project, he tells the story that he, there was a march, um, there was a candlelight vigil in New York City for those who had died of this new disease. And they had plaque, they had papers, you know, bearing the names of their friends and it's horrifying, sad, you know, terrible. And, and they, they put, they went to um, the Washington Monument or something in New York City. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. They were in, in, um, in San Francisco, right? And they put the placards up, they posted them on this particular memorial. And Cleve Jones said, to him, it looked like a quilt all of those names up like that on these, you know, poster board kind of things. And that's where he had the idea. But without question, there were these other quilt projects happening, right? It's a really great point. Thank you for bringing it up. Yes. Yes. This is what I love. I love this. Okay. Oh, sorry. I had no idea it was going to grow to be this size. So sure, I can do that. We got information about the Ribbon Project from Justine Merritt in the, in the Denver group that started this concept, I guess, about two and a half years ago. And we just brainstormed about it, and we thought, what could we do here in uh, Sonoma County that would be significant? Mm. So we thought, well, why don't we wrap our federal building as a way for what? us to participate in the Washington Pentagon wrapping. And, really? Uh, so we came here. And we measured how many feet the, the uh, federal building had, and we decided that we needed 270 segments. And pretty soon, segments started coming oh in. My God. And uh, at the end, we had, instead of 270 segments, we had 600 segments. Seriously? Mm. Real quick, I just want to say that when I saw this happen, I mean, like, I'm watching this with you, and it's like, I mean, I got up and, like, had a moment, right? And, like, the world in 1980, sorry, what was it? 82, you know, was not all great, right? Like, there was a lot of, you know, there's prejudice, racism in America, economic disparity, like, 
so I know that, right? Like that is a fact. That is not like an opinion. That is a fact. I know, Amy. I mean, it's crazy. It's so it's so touching. But that's the thing that I was gonna say is like, let's not sugarcoat things. Like things people were not like my point is like I see this and I'm like, what has happened to us in America? Like, could this happen now? And believe me, getting into politics that is not what's going to happen on this channel. I have no desire to do that because no. However, <laughs> you know, something like this today, I'll just say this objectively. I will say anything political very objectively, but like, could this happen today and have people like who looked really different, like come, come together and do it to be like, we have a common cause. Like bombs are the worst. <laughs> let's, let's get rid of those. Could we do it? you know? And maybe these were all hippie boomers, you know, maybe. But I don't think so. I mean, I saw a couple people in there with like, like old dudes with mustaches, you know, that who knows, but they, I don't know, like a couple of those guys like didn't like fit the profile of like a hippie boomer. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I hope so too, Star Sundance. I hope that we could, and maybe we could, but I just like, I see this and I, I just think like, Oh man, it would be so good to see something like this. And I just, I just don't know, you know? Sometimes I really miss America, you know, because I think about, I love my country, you know? Anyway, I'm gonna, by the way, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, but I don't want to stop the thing because I can watch it anytime and I'll, I'll be really quick. Okay, I'll be right back. It's to hold celebrations of their own during the spring of 1985. In this way, the entire nation seemed to be closely tied, stitch by stitch. From the time the idea was launched, the ribbon took on a life of its own. And for the next three years, it would wind lovingly around the country. This simple idea had seized the hearts and imaginations of countless people, many who had never expressed their hopes and fears before. From shore to shore, the response was unpredictably overwhelming. The astonishing amount of ribbon panels that were produced almost seemed to match the number of nuclear weapons stockpiled on this planet. Each segment had been cared for, nurtured, as if each stitch represented a breath, a sigh, a thought. It represented more than the fleeting memory of a parade. Each ribbon panel had a life, a soul. It would withstand time. And each was a gentle echo of the unity, which Betsy Ross had immortalized on the American flag. The first people Justine contacted with her idea were friends on her Christmas card list. And in the spirit of Christmas, it was dedicated to the indelible idea of peace and goodwill. In that sense, the project was blessed from the start. Last but not least, oh. and Christ said, the last shall not be the least. <laughs> right. I'm back, I'm back. Did you want to join us? I do. Come on, get in there. I'll oh. Been here today. Now, he, <laughs> he, you know, he's who I would expect, right? I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna do that because I, I, I don't want to keep having to mess with the chat. This, you know, this is like who I would expect, right, to do like the Boise Peace Quilt Project. And that's not a diss. That's just like the truth. But he's not the only kind of dude. He's not the only. Uh, um, person person who I see there the, the long beard the daishiki you know no no I saw a guy with spectacles and trousers and you know kind of a that guy anyway, I should not say that. it's even more than we imagined that would have been here today it took Justine 700 hours to create her segment when asked how she could give up something that had taken so long to make she replied that the earth's creation had taken much longer Considering the love, hope, and labor poured into a single panel, it was easy to become emotionally attached to it. Relinquishing it required a certain sacrifice, as all true gifts do. 
But to relinquish the beauty of a single child's smile is inconceivable. Hmm. The logistical problems for August the 4th are awesome. Because the ribbon has unwound at such a rate, we now do not have the mile, which is what a Catholic um, priest in uh, Monte Vista, Colorado, explained a mile would be 40 segments from each state. Well, I thought we could do that. We now have over 10 miles, and we probably will have much more than that. Wow. So what do you do with 10 miles of fabric, <laughs> thousands upon thousands of people, and so much beauty and love shared on fabric that uh, we have moved beyond the Pentagon to the mall. Up to wow. The so you need... There you go, Kate. You need water. You need sound systems. You mm -hmm. need CBs and walkie-talkies and um, mm -hmm. quarter toilets. <laughs> you need uh, more hours than we had imagined. So wow. many women of the Center for New Creation, two of whom are on our board, accepted this remarkable challenge. Sorry, hang on one second. This is what you gotta do, right? When you watch a thing. Center for New Creation. Hmm. Is that what I wanna do? with Google. There it is. I'm Jesus Army. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. I don't know. This looks sort of Yeah, in Arlington. Yeah, that makes sense, right? For the Washington thing. Center for New Creation. I'm good at Google. I mean, I think so. Center for New Creation, 1979. What up, 1979? Year of my birth. Interfaith Peace and Justice Center in Arlington. 15 years, okay, mm-hmm, 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 closed its doors in the 90s, Jubilee, okay, wow, part of an international movement to demand that the financial institutions, that financial institutions cancel the unsustainable debt of poor countries around the world, interesting, huh, wow, okay, cool, man, this is, you know what, this is what I, okay, real quick, real quick, Sorry, wrong, wrong tab. The reason, so I'm interested in a lot of things, right? The reason that quilts keep, I keep coming back to them in my life is because quilts are a portal for me, right? They, they, they open up the whole world for me because I just learned about, like I learned about nuclear disarmament activities that were happening, grassroots movements that were happening in, in the United States in the early 80s, mid 80s. I just learned about, you know, the Center for New Creation, you know, this particular group. Quilts, quilts lead, lead you to so much, you know? And I, I feel, you know, there, there's been times in my life when I was like, oh man, quilts, like, am I doing the right thing? You know, should I, I love them, I love the topic so much. Is that, what I, is that what I should be doing, right? But the answer is yes, because it's so much more than that. Okay, sorry, I'll stop. But this is what I mean, you know? Quilts are the window to everything else. Oh, she really needs to park trucks there all day, though. She has to offload. But I everybody's going to offload. We need to check that out, though. Did she call? So uh, if she particularly wants it back, then you know, go ahead and make arrangements for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, indeed, you need permits. I guarantee you that you need permits. One of the things that happened, David, was originally when the request was made, the, the uh, negotiations began, we said that this was impossible because what we were requesting were permits for three parades all taking place in the same city at the same time. Absolutely unprecedented and impossible. Now, of course, they've come around, but they've come around because the women at the Center for New Creation have worked and worked and worked and worked. Very disappointed. That's right, ladies. I'm disappointed because we had been told we had them, therefore we stopped planning for an alternative method of getting water to those people. Well, I guess we start planning again. We have to start planning again. The weekend approached, and people across the country began to head for Washington. They're going to Washington, D.C. For what? 
tie a ribbon around the Pentagon. And the purpose of that is to protest the arms race. Do you have anything on the ribbon at all? Do I? No, I didn't. I didn't make anything. My daughter did. My friend. In fact, two of my daughters did. My friend and my friend's children. We've been on the road now for. Wow. Oh, nice. And we're on our way to Washington for the ribbon ceremony tomorrow, the tie-in. People here, we're in Hancock, Maryland, don't know about what's happening in Washington. Mm. So I just had the pleasure of telling a lady, said, what's she doing with the TV camera out there? <laughs> so I told her all about the ribbon ceremony. She's very, very excited. Uh, the night was long, but it was, it's okay. It's a good thing. And we know where we're going. So as the first groups were arriving in Washington for the festivities... Just like the AIDS quilt, right? The Names Project, I mean, it was all about the mall, right? All about getting to the mall. Reception was held by Peace Links, an organization working to raise consciousness to the issues of nuclear war and to enable women to take an active part in the debate. I'd like to introduce you to Betty Bumpers, who's the president of Peace Links and the founder. Betty? This is, I think, uh, a historic moment in a movement that has started across this country. It is a new movement of people who have never been involved uh, in something like this before. Mm. It is a statement, as you can see by looking at the ribbons, uh, a very gentle statement by women across this country uh, that have awakened to the mm. fact that their families that their families and their home on this planet are in jeopardy. And that it is a plea to our leadership to take us out of this dilemma that we face. No one knows what makes an effect. What we do know is if we sit home and put our thumbs... Who is that? Is that Paul Simon? Not the singer. But... The, the people who are in the, the industry... Politician. Wow. Several of us uh, spoke on the floor this morning, on the floor of the summit, uh, commemorating the 40th anniversary of the Hiroshima bombing. Wow. Coincidentally, it was on that's next Tuesday, the 40th, and then the following Friday is the 40th anniversary of the Nagasaki bombing. You know, it's an interesting thing. I, I hope you don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but, you know, if you just go look at where a test was conducted, see a glazed desert floor where everything the sand was turned to glass that's one thing but when you see the twisted uh, buildings the, the utter destruction of Hiroshima and nothing would have ever carried the message like that did. all the tests in the world would have done Man, uh, I don't mean to take anything away as a representative of Congress let me just stress that uh sorry uh hashtag shade what was that I mean, sorry, that was a neg, right? Did I miss that? <laughs> Did I miss something? I mean, sorry, I get a little arch whenever, like, I see basically... I'm sorry, this. Like, like I, as a quilt person, I've had to deal with legit prejudice. Like, talking to... Okay, for so I'm not, like... I, 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 men, yay, like thumbs up, right? But like I have been at, you know, functions, right? Where I, t a lot of functions where like I'll tell somebody what I do or like what I, yeah, what I do. And they're just like super condescending about it because, you know, it's, it's not their world. They don't know about it. But like, I think that scene was kept in this film, I think, because like this is kind of what she, like her, this amazing woman, you know, Justine Merritt, like she had to feel this kind of thing. Am I wrong? But he was like, you know, I think the best like symbolism for, you know, Hiroshima is the bombed out, you know, the glass on the ground. Like, maybe I'm wrong. I don't, I don't want to throw shade if it's not necessary, but like he kept saying like, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but like really what's affecting, you know, what's like really effective in, the, in, you know, sharing the message is like the actual site of the bomb, not your quilt. Sorry. 
got I get a little sensitive. It's cool. It's cool. I could be wrong, whatever, but I'm gonna defend her until the death, right? You know, it's an interesting thing. I hope you don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but you know, if you just go look at where a test was coming. Do you see her? She's like, mm -hmm. he's like, I hope you won't misunderstand what I'm saying, and she's like, Go on. I've been here before. Sorry. Ah! Sorry. Nothing will carry carry the message like that did. Thank you, Carol. I mean, Representative of Congress, let me just stress that this is the most conservative group of people in the world because there's no instinct. Grinnell, Iowa. More conservative than survival, and that's what we're talking about. And hmm. we in Congress are, are deeply impressed with what all of you have done, and uh, our hats are off to a lady who began with a Christmas card list Bike. and tied it Gary. to a second Thank Christmas you. card list of Betty Bumpers, and created a movement that, uh, as I think, astonished the country. The tying of the Pentagon ribbon had been scheduled to take place on Sunday, August 4th, 1985, in commemoration of the 40th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima. The events that weekend began early Saturday morning. These two people chose to depict one of the many horrors of a nuclear war. They illustrated how people would be vaporized instantly by a nuclear Oof. blast. Only their shadows remaining. As two survivors of Hiroshima. Wow. We're hoping that each participant will make 20 shadows in the evening. And we have 100 participants. So there should be quite a few shadows. Hmm. Oh, man. This one? Look, this is a little boy. A boy. It's a little boy. So, does it look like the images in Hiroshima? No, no. It's a little bit. He says, um, so it's maybe it's a little bit. Yeah, that's it. Has it washed away? After the shadow painting, he feels the anger of the dead people. Mm. Mm. I picked this up in 1947 in on the hospital grounds of, in Nagasaki. Wow. And you can see it's obviously a medicine bottle. You can even see the remains of the medicine. Wow. The force of the blast obviously forced the cork in and melted the bottle momentarily but wow. went by so fast that it solidified before it completely disintegrated and it sat there till 47 when i picked it up hmm. to simply illustrate in sheer numbers, in sheer exact numbers, I think, the uh, the numbers of, of nuclear warheads that the United States has. Just so people walking by could just sort of <laughs> look at it and uh, just sort of let it sink in. I mean, sorry, like, it's intense, right? Like, the film's intense. About halfway, halfway through it right now. And, like, you know... Where are, like, what's the nuclear cache right now in the States? I don't know. I don't know. But, like, if it's the same or just slightly diminished, this is still relevant, right? <laughs> but it's not a cause people take up right now. I don't know. It's interesting. As I explained to someone, yes. And, look, there's the ribbon, right, in the back. Here it is. And it's, we're going to find out how far it goes but all these people have come to see it, you know, or their participants, we don't know. Today, 
I saw a group of people make a mistake one time following a leader out of a concert and going down into the basement. They goofed and thousands of people were down in the basement of this building. It just takes a few leaders to make us go awry and I think it just takes a few leaders to make us do something wonderful. Mm -hmm. I dig down deep and I have to hope we are leaders doing something to lead people the right way. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's so long. It's so different than all the others, isn't it? It's something. It's made out of. It is. It looks like it's silk. These are Russian sewing machines. Cool. It's just yards and yards of ready to come down. Right on. It has something to do with, oh, I know, it was Cottage, Grove, Oregon. Oregon. That's a sister city of four in Russia. And they wanted particularly to be wrapped around the Pentagon. Hell yeah. That same day, some 8,000 miles away in Hiroshima, Japan. What? What? A similar peace ribbon was unfolding around the A-bomb memorial dome. Fucking ridiculous. Located sorry. the epicenter of the explosion itself. This event also was inspired by Justine's idea. I dream of giving birth so a child who will ask mother what was war. I want to know who said that, sorry. I dream of giving birth. Eve Miriam. Who's Eve Miriam? Oh, a poet. Well, okay. God bless America. God! You see? You see how quilts give us everything else? There you go. Whoop. Eve Miriam, sorry. I'll put, I'll put, <laughs> can I delete this? This thing that I gave you was really big. Okay, I'll just put her name. Eve Miriam, okay. Read a poem by her, because it's probably really good. Look at this wonderful one, the little child with the, uh, see this one? Oh, we love this. It's a little child it says the one thing she can't imagine that wouldn't be on the earth would be a teddy bear. And she got the Aww. teddy bear with the uh, balloons. Kansas, and we're uh, 
out here for this little girl right here, Jeannie Kathleen Firth, and that's why we're doing all this. She made a ribbon, and my wife here, Debbie, made a ribbon, and this is my mother-in-law, Phyllis. So three generations are here. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to show just a fraction of what might be lost in a nuclear holocaust annihilation. So it's, a, it's just a symbol of that and what people feel about it. <laughs> Seems real obvious to me. <laughs> what I mean. Like the common folk who had built the great medieval What's so hard about that? Each participant's name would not be remembered in history, but history would remember them. Look at that. Tree everlasting. That's that block. Glad you're here, Vagini. <laughs> wow, that's a, look at that. That's amazing. What? What? One lady. One lady had an idea, you know. To a most solemn moment in our dedication <laughs> to peace. No spoilers. We, I promise. Survivors. Yeah. Right. Only nuclear attack Oop, sorry. in the history of humankind called the Hibaksha wow. have come to be this afternoon with us. We welcome their message. I barely survived from the direct attack, but 21 years ago, this 19 years after the bombing, the radioactivity left in my body attacked me again, and my whole body was paralyzed. I became like a living corpse, unable to see or eat or utter a word. At that time, I was injured with the broken glasses, the shattered broken glasses only. But 
After I got married, four years after the bombing, I had my first boy and second girl hmm. born dead. こちらにいらっしゃる女性の方がたくさんいらっしゃるとお見けお見受けしますが、子供が亡くなることはとても悲しいことです。I see in front of you so many, many women. And I am sure all of you women understand what the sad thing it is to have children died. Let us work together for the success of the ribbon tomorrow. No more Hiroshima, no more Nagasaki, no more Hiroshima. To all of you present this day in this beautiful place where needlepoint, stained glass, and sunshine warm stone. To all of you who hear these words in other places. Greetings. I believe that the ribbon conceived in fear, grief, and rage.、Mm. I know that the ribbon has grown into a lovely binding cloth.、Mm. To tie up a nation's wounds.、Mm. I believe we have、wow. come to a firm life with our creative imaginations, with our eager fingers, and out of such a burst of color and power. Has come life. But I believe our work for peace has just begun. As we watch a child sleeping, whether that child is seven months. Are seven years, are thirty-seven. As we watch our children playing, what would we not give of our time, our gifts, our treasure, to save a single sleeping child and a vulnerable planet? In this place,、hmm. this afternoon, there are many who have already risked family relationships to bring the ribbon to life in 50 states. Your dedication, called obsession by some, has called you in powerful ways. To move beyond the doorsteps of your home, I am saying more is required of you. If all you did, dear friends, 
were to speak out, to write letters, to vote, you would be bringing the peace. I simply say, if all you can give is of your treasure, then give. Mm. We are bright, compassionate people. Mm. We are intelligent, creative, caring people. We are General Eisenhower's people gathering to lead our leaders on the road to peace. We have been called to spread the word. We have been chosen to bring the peace. Amen. Amen. Hmm. God, I love those glasses. Ugh. The 80s. Goals, fashion goals. <laughs> All those people are like, Ugh. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Howard. So they're in D.C., right? Howard? I mean, I think they're in D.C. I Right? Of course, Howard. This is the wall entrance to the Pentagon. I love her. say like she's humble she's judith sorry uh, justine sorry i'm really bad at names it's very embarrassing justine is so she's humble like there's no pretense right she's not pretentious she's not like well you know we just had a dream and like we did it and like it's exciting she's i mean i believe her you know like she's like we i'm really excited everyone's like joining she's sincere and, and you know it matters yeah but obviously I didn't make 25,000 segments. See? And I didn't uh, lease buses and uh, porta toilets. So a lot of people in a lot of places have made this possible. So I, I'll, I'll claim the idea, but I won't claim uh, the excitement and beauty of today. This is who you want leading a movement, thousands right? Thousands of people working thousands of hours to make this come true. I'm a quilter and that's how I found ah! Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can we hear that again? Hello. Uh, r r r I'm a quilter. And no. I found out about the ribbon, and, and there's a lot of um, 
time and a lot of love put into all the stitches that the people put into quilts. And when I realized that if a bomb was dropped, you know, not just the new quilts, but all the old quilts, all oh. the quilts that, um, we've been saving for so many years and that have been kept in museums and, you know, all the family history and all those wonderful little stitches that people put in would be gone. They'd just be gone. And, um... So the one that, the banner that I did, that was my personal one, had little children's hands touching a quilt, and that's what I would miss the most. Are you kidding me? Put forth the effort to make reservations and come all the way to Washington. Somebody will know that, and I must be serious about what I'm doing. And the best thing out of today, this will show that the peace movement is creative, is loving, is joyful, is positive. You get so many negative images. The president tells about how negative those anti-American people look around here. These are the real Americans. Look at those ribbons. They show Fuck you yeah. Joy. Sorry. Show you Sorry. Activity. Show you a lot of, you know, life right there. These are the ribbons that we're going to try to put in the parade of ribbons. We've been in all these demonstrations for over 25 years. Mm. She hasn't been. She's not that old. <laughs> pushing babies out, spending 18 years getting them grown up and then having them blown away with a gun. Get your banner. Get someone else's banner. Take a banner from a state you've never heard of <laughs> and join the walk. Please mom up. We're starting the red walk now. Wow. The have been sent from countries around the world. Panels came from England, Germany, Canada, Holland, Italy, Australia, and New Zealand, to name only a few. sing these days, right? y'all they're not just doing it with hands they're, they made quilts and stuff the two sections of the pentagon ribbon whoa this is the one i started this is the first one that's right cap weaver begun in 1982 wow that's the first piece she's got each one of us is important and that's what this has to say. That's right. With color and with love and with prayer. Right on. I have made three more. And the fourth one is incomplete. And that is how it will be. Because I cannot write each of your names. I can only pray for each of your lives and the lives of all the children 
Let's do it. <laughs> oh man. It's the first time I've seen her get really choked up, you know? Which is cool because it's not about her, you know? She's like, it's not about her getting upset. It's about her doing the stuff, right? So if she gets all worked up, it's about her, right? But she's not. She's steady. I know, Cap Weaver. Me neither. I had never seen this. Like, I have never seen this film. It's really good. I think they did a good job. It had begun with one pull of a thread. And we are singing, singing for... Sorry. Uh... And we are... It had begun with one pull of a thread. Take it here. So, that was cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, a needle and thread, right? They said it uh, It started with that, and, you know, sorry, let's uh, go ahead. Um, the ribbon, you know, I mean, I think, you know, and if we go back to what we started with tonight, the Boise Peace Quilt Project, you know, um, that was one of many groups, right, who was doing this kind of thing uh, in terms of, like, just getting the word out and, like, making... Well, not just getting the word out, like, awareness. Like, you know, bringing awareness is sometimes kind of like, okay, what are you actually doing? Like, are you just talking about a cause? Are you just talking about something that you care about? You know, we're bringing awareness to this or that. And, and it matters. It's not... It's not not it's not for nothing, right? To like talk about a problem, a societal issue, and whatnot. But like, you know, these these groups that were using textiles to show, to like visibly show, you know, that people took their time and they took their energy and their you know feeling and their you know uh, instinct about about a cause, and they put it into something tangible, and these quilts that the Boise Peace Quilt Project made, the ribbon, when you actually make something with your hands and your time, you know, it, it, it is an activist kind of thing. It is, uh, they call it craftivism sometimes, and that can be a bad thing. It, sometimes it can be, you know, something that gets criticized. I mean, the AIDS quilt, uh, I think, is it Kate? I think we talked about the AIDS quilt a little bit earlier, and like th that book that I showed you, Frey, actually, the chapter that she has on the AIDS quilt, it's fascinating. It was the first place I ever saw um, talk about the backlash to the AIDS quilt. ACT UP, which is an inc incredible story, an incredible group of, of, um, of AIDS activists. And, you know, th there were a lot of members of ACT UP and beyond who didn't like the AIDS quilt. They were not fans. In fact, they, they called it the death tarp, quote unquote, the death tarp at times. 
I know, Star Sundance. It was so amazing. I'm so glad you all watched it with me. It was so much fun. Um, but the AIDS quilt got backlash, actually. I, I always thought it was, like, only good. You know, the AIDS quilt, like, oh, how could it not be amazing? And, you know, we can talk about the AIDS quilt at some point. I think sometimes these Twitch streams, it would be cool to focus it on one thing, which is kind of what I've done tonight, is focus it on these peace quilts, the early 80s. Um... But some people felt like the, the AIDS quilt was taking attention away from what should really be happening, which was cure, treatment, you know, politics. You know, get, Reagan didn't say the word AIDS for five years. 81 was when the first cases started happening in New York and, and when the first, you know, vigils were being held and the, the gay cancer, right? We'll talk about the AIDS quilt. It'd be a good thing to focus a stream on. Um... But, you know, people who who were in the trenches, truly, <clears throat> in New York and San Francisco and Dallas was a huge, huge uh, AIDS, it was t terrible plague there. And they were like, you know, who cares about a quilt? And there, there surely were people who, you know, with the ribbon, let's just search the ribbon uh, Pentagon and see what images we get. There were surely people who were like, you know, that's great you're doing a ribbon <laughs> like you're doing like a quilt oh look at these wonderful pictures um you know around the pentagon but actually like we need policy we need well there's there's a book i actually heard about that book you know we need policy we need people to vote like you should really actually not be making a quilt you should be getting out the vote blah 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 but what I heard and what I'll say whenever we talk about this this topic, um, and I'm going to wrap it up. I mean, two hours is kind of like, it's actually, two hours is not a long time for a Twitch stream. The gamers Twitch for like eight hours. But for, for us for now, you know, we'll do it at two hours. I mean, I could hang out all night. I got to be honest. But um, maybe next next time. But, you know, people could say like, maybe you should be getting out the vote instead of making a quilt. You know, maybe you should, instead of stitching, here's the fabulous uh, Justine. Oh, she's so great. Uh, you know, maybe you should be doing something else and not, like, worrying about, like, making quilts. But, 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 but this woman who was very um, influential, very much a part of ACT UP, I should say, she did an oral history project on, on ACT UP. Um, she came to the school where I was in grad school in, in Chicago and she gave a lecture and I was like right up front, you know? And I asked her about, about activism and stuff and the Me Too movement was happening at the time. And I was like, you know, what's the deal with, with Me Too? Like, I don't really want to do a hashtag on Instagram. Like, I don't really want to get involved in this thing in that way. Like I could, I qualify to like do a hashtag, but that's not what I want to do. And she was like, in, in, a, in a moment in, in society where you want change, all of the different things that people do matter. She's like, you know, if you want to do a hashtag on Twitter about Me Too, great. If you want to do, if you want to march in the street, great. She's like, during the AIDS crisis, you know, there were people who made phone calls. There were people who made the AIDS quilt panels. There were people who marched there were people who went to Washington and she's like, all of that stuff mattered. And so that was a great lesson for me because, you know, in any sort of you know moment where people are really wanting change, you know, nuclear disarmament, some people worked on the ribbon and walked. I mean, look, this is great. Look at this. Hang on, let me do something. You know, some people made a ribbon panel and went to, went to Japan. Right? Some people went to Japan. Um, fabulous. Anniversary. God, I love the internet. Um, you know, some people went to Japan. <laughs> and, and some people went to Washington. And some people never got out of their town to do anything because they couldn't. But they still participated in the ribbon and sent their piece to Washington. And, and anyway, so, so it takes everything is the point. And uh, I really enjoyed, you know that movie. <laughs> I really enjoyed um, watching it with you. Uh, I love this. I love I love this Twitch thing. And and that's where I'm going to end it. You know, your stream kept me company sewing a quilt. Thank you. Never knew about this. And I was alive then. Aha. So 
Y'all, I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. Bunnies. We're just going to put bunnies on the screen while I say goodbye. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I don't know if you dropped in a little bit later or you, you stayed the whole time. Um, I like doing this. It's very, it's very unusual, you know, like it's different from any other quilt related content I've ever watched. But, um, if you liked it, I hope that you will right on SW Firefly. Thank you for the stream. It's been so nice watching this history with you. This is what you're going to get when I, when I stream. Some will be history, some will be current stuff, but it'll, it'll be quilt related. And if you liked it, tell your friends, you know, Twitch, it's not scary. You know, what is it? And I'm going to, for a while, I'm going to switch up the times that I do it because I was like, Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. I'm going to stream, but I, I don't think that's the right thing to do. I think I should try different times to see what works for more people. You can watch the stream back on twitch.tv, Yo Mary Fonz, and um, they only last for 60 days. So catch the other ones. This is the best so far, I have to say. I really enjoyed this one. Um, thanks for coming. And yeah, that's it. Follow me, like, subscribe. I hate that part, <laughs> but you got to do that stuff. Okay. Um, I love you so much. I'll, I'll see you real soon. Uh, how do I do? Stop streaming. Okay. Bye. It's 10 o'clock. I got to go to bed and eat more cake.